Okay, so my name is Natasha Cropper and I'm going to share my testimony. I have videos out there already, but I just kind of want to give a more current one, you know, just to put on my page really quick, okay? Um, so I'm trying to remember everything. <laughs> it would be better to hear the others because I've healed so much since those other videos because um, healing has been a process. It's been a process, but let me kind of give you a quick synopsis as to my testimony and why I am so going so hard about marriage and because God has opened my eyes and he showed me and I know God has put it on my heart to make sure that I get the truth out there because trust me, I was one of those people that thought there was an exception clause and God showed me truth. So let me get right into who I am and how did I get to where I am now and started really walking with the Lord and becoming born again, like truly born again. So I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. My family is West Indian. My family's from Barbados. So I grew up in a West Indian home. Um, everyone in the house knows about Jesus. We grew up with the Bible, the King James Bible. So it's not like we had any other religion or any type of, we knew about God, the true God of the Bible. Okay. That, I'm so blessed to know that I was raised in a house that knew the true living God. Growing up as a child, um, my great grandmother used to sing hymns in the kitchen. I remember that. And she used to read scripture and I used to go to church with my mom, a Baptist church um, that I used to attend with my mom. I do remember that as a child. I can't tell you anything I learned as a child. One thing I do know is playing in the church. They had like a cafeteria we would eat like at lunchtime, like we would spend all day at church. Um, and I don't remember going to church like my whole childhood, but there was a Part of my childhood I remember where my mom had us really going in fact I was in like a church play at some point one thing I do remember from attending the Baptist Church was being baptized I don't remember what the pastor said I just know I went underwater and that's all I remember about my church I don't remember learning anything I don't remember any of it um, but as far as I knew who God was in the Bible I knew that Jesus died on the cross like I knew all of that but I was not one to go pick up the Bible and like literally study the Bible get to know God that was not me growing up in Brooklyn New York I was far from God I was far from him I was just like most of the world living for the world in all kind of sin doing things I should have not been doing things that I look back and I regret that was my childhood that was my life growing up hanging with the wrong people, you know, going to parties and stuff like that, like just things you should not be doing. So, um, yeah, so that was my childhood. Um, and then let me kind of speed it up. So by the time, uh, what was it? 2001, I was living in Jersey city. In fact, I had a job, a really good job in Jersey city. I saw the twin towers come down right before my eyes, just looking out of the window the job I had at the time was right at the waterfront by the Twin Towers so I saw the whole thing happen um, so with that job that I had I made really good money and what I would do is take my money and come visit my friend who lived here at the time and uh, Atlanta was my vacation so I would come here and visit her on the summers and one particular summer in 2003 I came down here and I met my husband. Long story short, I met my husband. So in 2004, packed up, moved down here to Georgia from Jersey City. Again, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, but I was living briefly in Jersey City. So I moved here to be, um, then I got married. Me and my husband, we got married here in Georgia. And we have two beautiful girls. Um, and then as far as my marriage, everything was awesome um, but then as time went on 
I started to see the behaviors of my husband. Um, and it just became to a point where it started to put a strain on our marriage. It's, it put a strain on our marriage. And I can't get in, I'm not going to go into everything because it'll take up too much time. I just wanted to do a brief synopsis. So anyway, by 2015, my husband, he literally left. He left, never came back. We wind up going through the court, not by my choice. I did not want the divorce. He left. Here we are now. I. It was him leaving actually that, and like I said, this is a quick synopsis. Like there's so much detail. I have two videos out there that is very detailed, but I'm just not going into the whole detail. I just want to get to where I am in in the spirit and what that's really what I'm trying to get with this with this video. If you want to get into the whole detail of everything that happened and what went on, I'll be glad to show those to share those videos with you. Um, but anyway, so he left in the end of 2015 of October. We were living in a four bedroom house. My kids were much smaller at that time. And uh, he never came back. I literally had to figure out what to do. I have been, it's just been me and my girls since then. He does come to see his children on his visitations. Um, and it was him leaving that, and when I say him coming to see his girls, meaning he picks them up, he's not, he's not doing any other thing than that. He just picks up his kids and he keeps it moving. He doesn't even come to the door. That's a whole nother story. But anyway, um, so when he left, it totally devastated me. Totally. I mean, I had witnessed like when my grandmother died and my great grandmother died, that was like horrible for me. But when my husband left, nothing compared to that, nothing compared to the broken heart, to the pain. I, I just, I could not believe, I can't, even to this day, like, I've healed a lot, like, I'm not nowhere what I was, but I was devastated, um, and I, I realize it now, because you're one flesh, and it's like a part of your flesh just died, and you're dragging around with half of your body dead, that's what it feels like, um, so anyway, so he left, and it was that moment that turned me to the Lord, and God showed me, and in 2016, going through the whole court system, let me tell you something, that is not of God. That is, I know just from the system that that is not what God wants. He does not put his children to go in, in court to be against one another. Why would God send you to divorce? First of all, if a person's going there for adultery, you're already angry, you're bitter, you, you have no forgiveness whatsoever right and then you're gonna be at each other you're gonna be at each other like trying to hurt one another so why would y'all want to do that it's clear that it doesn't say that in scripture that you can take them to court for adultery okay it doesn't say that but anyway I wind up going through the court system being naive not knowing that because I thought there was an exception clause you know right so God's on my side. There, God is on my side, I thought, because there's an exception clause. Plus, I was listening to pastors, not really in the word of God. And I, you know, and I didn't even want to go to court. My husband, he's the one who wanted the divorce. I didn't. I felt like my hand was forced. Um, but anyway, so I went through the whole court. It was terrible. 2016, it was worse than the whole marriage going through court. Then we got the final decree papers in November, okay? And I remember sitting in the car with my attorney and I was like, she's like telling me, oh, you, you know, your life, you can move on and this is great, it's over. And I just remember sitting there like, what in the world have I done? What, what is going on here? It didn't feel over to me. I still felt very much married. And um, I felt horrible that night. I absolutely felt horrible that night after court. And as the months went on, I just didn't feel right. I'm still in the Word of God because when he left in October 2015, I never stopped seeking the Lord. I was in the Word of God. 
But the problem was I was listening. I had people in my ear, friends and family who kind of led me through to the, before you know it, I'm in a courthouse and I can't blame anyone. I should have known better. I should have been seeking the Lord quietly, waiting patiently, and I didn't do that. I moved out of anger. And like I said, it wasn't just me. It was like my back was against the wall. I did not want to go to court. But I was there. I was there. And it just went full. Once I had the attorney, he got his attorney. It was full force. We were just back and forth. It was like a wrestling match. It was terrible. I would not recommend that for no one. And I know for a fact that is not of God to send a marriage into a courtroom. I know it. Anyway, so I'm seeking God, but I still listen to pastors, still listening to pastors. And um, so the divorce papers, we got these papers. I'm feeling like, what in the world did I do? I still feel married. I remember speaking to a friend six months later, and she's telling me, maybe you need to seek a counselor. You know, I'm, I have all these people in my ear, like, what's wrong with you? Like, get over it kind of thing. And God showed me as I continue to seek him, continue to pray and seek direction, really studying marriage. I mean, I'm studying marriage now because I don't understand what is happening. God, I thought there's an exception clause, but why am I feeling this way? And God showed me. He showed me in 2017. He showed me and I saw everything about marriage. I studied it and I studied and studied. And when you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you will get to know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I'm going to tell you this. There's no way you can come back empty and say he says it's okay to get a divorce. No, no. That's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible says he hate put it away. And it's all through the Bible to prove that. Just alone, Jesus coming here, God coming in the flesh to reconcile us back to the Father shows you that he's a God of reconciliation, not divorce. You cannot tell me he's about co-parenting and, and breaking up household when he says to raise up a godly seed. No, you got a different God. That's not the God of the Bible. If that's who you think it's okay to go and divorce and put away your wife, put away your husband, no, 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 no. And my own pastor during my whole 2016 going through the court, I was still going to the church at the time. I sought counsel from my own pastor, and he couldn't even tell me this. He just told me, pray for him. He never told me, you know, you go in the courts, that's going to cause, you know, a problem. You're going to be sinning against God. You know, you can't remarry. He never said that. The pastors never. I went to other churches. No one told me this. But I was really, my own pastor, that's most disappointing. He didn't tell me that. And you see it today. The pastors are leading people to hell. But anyway, back to 2017. So I went and um, when I found out all this truth, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to tell my husband, right? You know, I have to let him know. I have to let him know we're still married. And um, I went to my husband with it and he literally said, no, no. I mean, he read some of the scripture. I had my Bible in my hand. And he said, what does this say? I said, you don't see what it says? I remember showing him Romans um, chapter 7, verse 2. And he's like, what is what is this saying? And he thinks that we're divorced. And keep in mind, my husband's Jehovah Witness, so they have a whole other thinking process. That's a whole other video. Um, but my husband to this day thinks we're divorced. And um, I'm going to tell you one thing. The best thing that happened to me, though, was my husband, my husband leaving because God took the bad for the good. I'm going to tell you this. If he did not leave, I would still be lukewarm, just a quoting scripture Christian. That's all I was. I could quote some scriptures, but I went to church every now and then. Not that you have to go to church to be a Christian and to believe you're supposed to be a follower of Christ. Anyway, that's you get my point. I thought going to church at the time meant God was pleased with me. And, you know, I didn't always go. And um, I spoke to my husband in ways I shouldn't have as a wife. I've learned so much about how to be a wife. God has showed me over the years since my husband left how to truly be a wife. 
and I think that's I think that is a part now that um, I cherish and I don't know if my husband will ever come back I pray for him the main thing I pray for him at the moment is salvation his salvation he may never come back because the Bible tells us to remain unmarried or reconciled I cannot remarry if I remarry I would be committing adultery and I'm not interested in anyone anyway because I'm one flesh with my husband to death whether he believes it or not I have to remain faithful to God and I have to remain faithful to my husband until he takes his last breath until I become a widow that is what the Bible says it doesn't matter what your pastor told you it doesn't matter if you're trying to look for an excuse there is no excuse learn the Bible don't learn Matthew 532 alone and Matthew 19 9 learn what God is saying there learn what God is saying eat the whole scroll okay not verses get to fall in love with God and that's where I am and I'm gonna obey God I don't care what no one says I have to obey God he told me to remain faithful I still love my husband it took me the, the hardest thing it took me I will tell you was unforgiveness I held on to a lot of unforgiveness that was the longest sin that took me to go and it, it was gone it, it was gone because I said I can't I love him too much I don't want him to go to, to hell and I continue to pray I hold no no um, unforgiveness for my husband I don't if he was to come back you know that would be a choice I would have to make to reconcile God tells me to reconcile or to remain unmarried but I cannot I cannot remarry and I won't I'm not disobeying God for no man for no one I have to set an example for my children what example are you setting when you take it upon yourself to remarry and you got a strange man around your children no I'm not doing that God has been faithful to me. He takes care of me and my children. Even though my husband's not here, I still am his wife until death. And that's why I'm on here all the time, warning, warning, warning. Because I wasn't told these truths. God had to show it to me because I was seeking truth. I was seeking him. When you seek God, he will show you. When you deny your flesh, he will show you. I don't live for my flesh. I could be celibate. I'm not thinking twice about having a need to be with a man. No. The only man for me is my husband. But if he don't come back, okay. I still have to be faithful to my Lord. Because I, I have to go through that door. I have to go through the narrow road. Re regardless if my husband come or not. I have to go through. I have to go into heaven. That is not an option for me. Why is that an option for you? Think about that. So that's why I'm on here warning and warning because God has showed me truth. I'm living it in my life. I've been called all kind of names. People say, oh, you think you're, you're like a nun. You know, people laugh at me and what are you talking about? You can go and, and, and date and stuff. That's the devil sending people to me. No, no. God said to remain unmarried or reconciled marriage is until death you're one flesh it's a covenant and I'm obeying God that's it I don't know I feel like I don't know if I missed something but that's where I am in my walk right now pretty much and I just pray for my husband that he'll even if he doesn't come back at least that he is saved that is the main thing is his salvation I set an example for my girls they know what it is they they see my walk they see it I'm not around here with no man. They see mommy being faithful to daddy, even though, the, even though daddy's not here. That is how we're supposed to set examples for our children. And it, it should be natural because when you're born again, it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing to be to want to walk and please God. When you're in your flesh, oh, you're thinking, oh, I can't be alone. I got to be with somebody. You got to prove something. You're going to hell if you don't obey God. 